Okay, so we are reading Robert Monroe's Far Journeys. And we are on page, uh, chapter 15, page number 219 of the book and page number 115 of the PDF. Click. I'm floating over a wide brown field, just about 3,000 feet up. I'm flat on the bottom and strong life energy is pouring up at me from below. I'm getting larger and larger and I eagerly convert the energy into being me. I'm a whirling vortex and my action takes water out of the energy and helps me get bigger. And I become more conscious, more aware as I get bigger. I'm able to know more. I'm like a round puffball on top and I feel myself growing upward more than outward. Now there's much of life energy flowing in me, building up. Wait, that's electricity. If I can keep growing enough before the water leaks out, if the energy be be from below lasts long enough, I'll get strong, really strong but I'm drifting away from the energy shaft and I can't stop the drift. So I'm not getting enough to, enough to. So now he is really experiencing either becoming a cloud or a tornado. It, it feels more like a cloud with the water coming up from the earth and getting, making him bigger and bigger, right? And he says he's fluffy on the top and there's electricity inside. It's the charge is building up from the energy which is radiating from the earth up to him. So he is actually experiencing being a cloud. We were floating over the earth, over a heavy forest. The brown field in the near distance was familiar. BB hovered in front of me. He vibrated. Fun, huh? I flickered. What was that? He indicated behind me. I turned. It was a medium-sized cumulus cloud, white on the side where the rays of the sun touched it, gray on the back with a dark flat bottom. Clouds have consciousness, the basis for life, waters, minute bits of chemicals and electricity. All the ingredients, what would a thunderhead be or a tornado, a hurricane, weather low, lows and highs? So again, he's, he's clearly experiencing that clouds also have conscious awareness. So like everything around us, we keep repeating this, have conscious awareness. Even weather patterns have a consciousness. They have a conscious awareness. BB cutting, ready to go again? I reached out and stretched, following. Click. I am in green water. It is lighter above me and darker below. My mouth is opening and closing automatically, taking in water, which flows through my head and out my ears. No, not ears, gills. I'm a fish, a very big fish. I can feel my stabilizing fins waving gently to keep me in place. My vision is split. I can't see exactly straight in front of me. Behind me is almost a blind spot, but my peripheral seeing is tremendous. Detail is exquisite, but not many colors, only one or two. I try moving, just thinking about it, and I speed forward very rapidly, turn right, left, roll, steep climb, then dive. Wait, something on the surface when I climbed, Got to go back, grab it. Hungry, hungry. I shoot uncontrolled through the surface, open mouth, gulping in something as I do. Then out of the air and back into the water, diving with a great sense of satisfaction and something wiggling and crunching in the back of my mouth. A bug? Deeper. But it's not dark as I thought. I can still see wonderfully. I am aware of another fish diving with me, tail and back of the body sculling, sculling strongly. Am I doing that too? I am. It just takes care of itself. 
I just think and it works like walking or running in a physical human body. I stop. Ahead of me is another fish. It is coming at me. No, it's gigantic. The water is deceptive. It's incredibly bigger than I am. It has hunger signals radiating. Go, go, it's after me. Swim, swim fast, it's coming after me. Up to the top, up, up faster. Signal in from my sides. Another fish swimming violently beside me. Signal from the stripes on my sides. Ra Ram, when you're in the air, skip, skip. I broke through the surface into the air, reached out and stretched. So okay. now, in that expanded state, he's actually experiencing being a fish and what happens with a fish. So like we have more frontal vision, the fish have more peripheral vision. And the colors that a fish sees is very clearly denoted over here. So that means uh, even I didn't remember this, but basically what he's saying here is that the fish cannot see too many colors, but the detail of what they see is beautiful. I, I guess we can see more colors than fishes. I was just above the water and I saw the body of my fish with the second one alongside it arch through the air and re-enter the water with the smallest of splashes. But immediately there was a rushing, a swirling under the surface. Fun, huh? It was BB beside me. I couldn't reply. I was shaking so hard. So he went on. I guaranteed AA I wouldn't let you go through the end of it. He had a percept you weren't ready and he was right. But you asked her about the food chain. I vibrated. All right, all right. Baby smooth. You always wanted the way it is, don't you? I smoothed also. Caught me by surprise, that's all. Well, this next adventure is quiet, nice and quiet. Ready? Everything is relative, including Baby's idea of quiet. I reached and stretched. So again, a, uh, Robert Monroe wanted to experience the food chain. So he experienced it. Now that experience itself being chased by that bigger fish was pretty unnerving, right? So it activated his sympathetic nervous system. So as to say, if you're looking at it from the physical body, so naturally he was stressed out and he was shaking. Now he had actually wanted to experience being eaten, but A said he's not ready for that experience yet. So they broke the experience before the fish was actually eaten. Click. I am waving gently up and down and bending, flexing, coursing into me from the smallest part of me, which is long and narrow with many tubes running through it. Comes my share of the glorious life force coming from the whole, the family of which I am a part. And I know how much the whole needs me and I gladly, joyously serve. As the energy that makes me waver and flex flows past my flat sides. Wait, that's just air, wind. I take from it the parts needed by the whole and send it back through the narrow tubes because it is needed. I do this so easily. I don't think of it as work. It's breathing. It's what I'm for to breathe for the whole as I take ashes from the whole and spread it out into the energy. My happy exchange and the other, also important, my special shape, my profile configuration, receives a special signal that the whole understands, needs and uses. All I do is receive it and send it on. And I am happy, supremely happy, with a total knowledge of belonging performing as I was designed to do. Beautiful balance, giving, receiving, security and strength of the whole. Take so that. this is him experiencing being a leaf, right? So the leaf is absorbing energy from the environment, absorbing the air from the environment and releasing the waste, right? So the waste is released in the form of carbon dioxide. And the energy is imbibed in, this, in the way of light energy, which is from the sun and oxygen. So, and then the leaves are giving the energy back into the tree. 
so the leaf is a part of the whole so he is actually experiencing the experience of what a leaf experiences while being attached to a tree very beautifully put click bb was beside me gets to you doesn't it i flickered what was that he indicated and i turned very close to me was a leaf an oak leaf it was attached by a long stem to a branch beyond the branch was the massive tree trunk solidly dug into the earth to have passed such knowledge without awareness i understood more this new human school ready to go again this is my favorite i flickered well uh, i'm not so sure maybe we ought to this one we designed ourselves we we cut in if you don't like it give me a signal and we'll pull a quick skip reluctantly i reached and stretched followed one click i am lying down in soft thick grasses lying on my side i open my eyes tall trees surround me on all sides their leaf laden branches from a canopy far overhead sunlight filters through to provide good but not overbearing luminescence a large tan colored panther is standing over me staring at me intently come on ram let's play i roll over and stand up stand up i have four legs how sure and stable it feels my head is out in front of my body now i have to turn to look at my back and hips fur covered sleek what's that waving behind me it's a tail i have a tail i think about moving it and it jerks back and forth back and forth how about that but it goes up and down just a little bit more down than up a scent gets my attention smells smells i didn't know so many different smells existed no instantly if they're near or far the signal input is as good as or better than my seeing and hearing i could know everything just from listening i flex my legs pull in my claws yes i have claws i feel great watch out world here i come such a glorious sense of being alive totally alive i want to run jump climb well come on then the tan panther loops off through the trees and i follow faster now into a gallop now running all out dodging through the trees easily avoiding low branches the exhilarating flow of smells passing my nose and i sample them all my eyes and ears picking up identifying and sorting a myriad of signals all familiar a large tree is dead ahead and the tan panther runs right up the side and i follow digging in claws pulling up and digging in claws it is waiting for me sitting casually on a thick branch i pull up beside it sit back he waves his tail and i wave mine in reply pretty good for a beginner ram i am too stimulated to reply i am remembering the great sense of power in my muscles sorting out the massive input that had come through my senses how could humans have ignored and distorted such profound perceptions have picked up so little of it when a lower animal lower picked up so much have to go down now the tan panther stands up turns and walks down the tree to the ground walks down i didn't know cats could do that they always back down i stand up and slowly back down jumping the last 8 feet easily first slide down under the tree near the trunk then pull a short skip very short i lie down in the tall grass and very reluctantly reach and stretch so now he is he is experiencing being a panther click 
We were hovering just above the ground and I looked down below us, breathing shallowly and slowly, lying in the grass was the body of the tan panther and another panther body, a darker brown one, which I had occupied. Beside me, Bibi rolled. Liked it, huh? I vibrated. Wonderful. Well, we got one more for you to sample. This one, N-A, uh, she picked out. She was sure it was your kind of stuff. You'll be alone, but she said you would know what to do. I'll just guide you there. Ready? Wondering what she would pick, I reached and stretched. Click. I'm floating high over a rugged snow-capped mountain range and I can see for hundreds of miles in every direction and I can see down, down on the ground, beautiful focus in the most minute detail. The leaves on the trees, small animals as they move over the rocks and I am moving slowly making a wide, easy turn. The standing wave from the mountain ridge offering solid and steady lift under my wings. Wings, I turn my head. Extending out from my shoulder is a broad arching wing, tapering to a round point. Feathers ruffling in the slight turbulence. I roll my head to the left. There is one to match from the other shoulder. I'm not floating, I'm soaring. As a bird, I'm a bird, a super sailplane, what does exactly what I think. I break the turn and the feathers on the trailing edge bend down on one side, up on the other, instant air lords. Let's reach for maximum lift. There it is, more under the left wing than the right. Turn into the lift, feel the lift getting stronger and stronger. It's peaking out, turn and circle, tighten the turn. Highest point of lift, must have 50 to 1 glide ratio. Spiral up, tighter and faster. Perfect control, air is thinner. Keep higher air speed. Wonder where the stall point is. Nose, no. Head up more. Higher angle of attack, more. Hey, that's pretty good. Would never have think a bird body could. Oops, it does stall. Easy to pick up speed again. Yay. Just fold the wings and down we go. Hey, Aram. And I bet these wings can take a big G load coming out of a dive if you open them slowly. Let's see. We'll just dive a little faster. Ram, you know what you're doing? That's about fast enough. Now to open the wings a little at a time slowly. Now back on the stick. Ah, tail feathers up a little. At a time, there, all back to normal. Back to cruising speed. What a ha, huh? what a bird. Must be a condor. Wonder what a quick sparrow would. Ram, just pull a short skip now. I sigh, reach and stretch. So now, in this one, he was a bird. And since Robert Monroe used to fly, fly planes and gliders, he was very, very connected to air speeds and all that stuff. So he really knew what to do, you know. So he was having a nice time being a bird. I was back in among the sparkling forms and I closed tightly. The radiation was making me break out in waves exquisitely familiar. After a moment, the radiation lessened and I opened. I had ident immediately on Bibi and the vague ident of the woman. Bibi rolled. That big old bird must be wondering how his wings got bent. I rolled with him. Oh no, there wasn't one strained tendon or muscle. Not one feather out of line when I left. I guarantee it. Bibi turned to the woman, a sparkling form. I already had ident as her. He's your problem. I'll check with the AA and see you at the site. I turn to the woman. The site? That's where we first greeted you. I turned inward. There were so many points left unanswered and I had a percept that my visit was growing short. Get to the key items, those first. I focused, 
completely open so nothing would be distorted the first timers when they come back one timers she corrected i went on if you have that constant input you must have an output too keep the flow the movement active she waited quietly politely or had she percept of both questions and answers i went on so humans do graduate from here the dorm question what happens to the graduates so over here now he over here he is asking the first timers when they come back so these are the people who have come into the earth uh, school reality for the first time and then you have the one timers who are evolved beings or evolved souls and they come just for one experience and they move back and then he says over here the dorm the first dorm that he had visited when in the beginning of this chapter and he says that where do they go once they graduate i went on if you have that constant input you must have an output to keep the flow the movement active she waited quietly politely or had she percept of both questions and answers i went on so humans do graduate from here the dorm question what happens to the graduates she flickered i don't have a percept of that they just click out one at a time or as a group she smooth usually several at once every so often one goes alone and they never return no they don't any communication with them after they leave she flickered not in a way that we understand i wanted to follow up on that one but i was sure it would come out any indications or symptoms that they are about to graduate she smooth the game oh yes they no longer need to experience earth so they begin to go physical less and less finally they stop completely so now over here again it is a matter of release of attachment okay letting go of attachment letting go of desires letting go of the the need to experience and that is when that detachment ultimately takes place the ultimate detachment right so even in these evolved states we are talking about the year 3000 the concept is that the more evolved you become or the more connected to the divine you become the less attached you become to what is happening around you in the earth plane reality finally they stop completely is that all no their radiation begins to change and they begin to close after that they click out i had the percept she was beginning to vibrate i don't want to act like an inquisitor but she opened more go on we expected you to ask just what you are i took another direction i need as much of a road as i can get i may not get another chance she smoothed neatly but there was a little roll in her response oh i'm sure you will in time space i went on are there many other growth patterns in consciousness similar to humans and earth she wrote you can can't count them if you wanted to there's that many and new ones coming online instant constantly i flickered online she rolled stronger A A knew you would like it if I use that phrase. I went with it. I would like to meet this A A face to face sometime. He knows more about me than I do myself. So She naturally, point. naturally, A A knows more about him because A A is actually him in an advanced form. She rolled stronger. She didn't respond. Just rolled more strongly. I didn't think it was that funny, but are humans now in communication with other such 
uh, civilizations, she smoothed out. Not very much. There is some exchange, but it doesn't seem necessary or important. What about other non-physical energy systems? She lighted, oh, those. We visit them as often as we can. I threw a, a high, hard one. To gather louche? She turned inward and opened carefully. No, to sow it, to plant the seeds. That lets the uh, ray have an ident to focus on. Now I was the one who turned inward and closed. A simple statement implied so much knowledge that made everything else no harm than sophisticated monkey chatter. There was much monkey left in me, too much, but I had a sudden percept and I knew I had to verify it. I ran it smooth. Are you about to graduate? She flickered. Yes. How do you know this? She vibrated. He told me you would ask the question, but you didn't ask it right, so I can't answer it. I didn't have to ask who the he was, but you gave me, you didn't have a percept what happened to graduates. She smoothed nicely. I don't, but you do. I blanked completely. Did she or inspects have it that I was to do the informing? A boy to do a man's job? I was so closed. I almost missed the rest of it. She was vibrating warmly. We've been expecting this. Uh, an event to take place. Then we can leave. I was ready to ask about the who the we was and the event, but I felt the familiar inspect signal and began to respond. And so did she. So did she. A great flood of percept ran through me and I had all the answers, I thought. We have to go back to the site now. She was smooth, yet vibrating. Are you ready? I closed. I dent the knoll, reached and stretched. Click. So... Now, she is very clearly stating that we have been expecting this, an event to take place. And then after that, we can leave. Okay. So this is something like when, when people are in focus 34 and 35, where people actually gather to see a particular event, which is going to take place. So they are wanting to look at an event, which is going to take place and we'll see what, what that event is once we come back. I was over the knoll, about a hundred feet up. The ridges were off to the west. So I turned, looking past the fences, fences, and there were the center buildings beyond with their dark red roofs. The gravel road showed a cloud of dust as a car rolled past. I had made the wrong ident. Back to 1982, a strange mixture of emotions surged through me and I knew it would take much to sort them out, if I could at all. I had even returned to the second body without direction, which was unusual. It was old stuff to home in on the physical. Slip in, open my eyes and move my arms and legs. I looked at the clock, time 2.40 a.m. Eight minutes? Only eight minutes? So this entire experience that he had where he went into the future and actually observed the whole thing was done in exactly eight minutes. That's why when we are going into these expanded states, we con constantly say that we are, uh, we are out of the time-space syndrome. So how much time you are in that expanded state can vary as an experience for each participant. It, it varies for each and every participant. That's why we don't give you the time of the, how much time the work, uh, the exercise is for. Uh, in fact, at the Institute, we used to take away the watches of, every person had to give up their watch, watches in the beginning. Now, of course, everyone has their phones and the time is there in the phone, but there are literally no watches in the Institute, you know. We take, used to take away the watches. So you're in a state of no time. You don't know what the time is. And in, in fact, the breaks, when we used to say the break times, 
We used to say your, your break is so big or your break is so big. We never used to give the time of the break. But now, of course, everyone has the phone, so it makes things a little different. Chapter 16, The Gathering. Days, weeks, and months pass by rapidly without any unusual OOB activity. I had grown away from the desire to investigate the local events that used to attract me so deeply. Occasionally, in the familiar early morning hours, I would awaken out of habit and detach from the physical. I would wait for a strong ident inspect signal, but there was none. After a few moments, I would re-enter the physical and go to sleep. So, now what started happening? You know, he was doing this out-of-body thing so much that he got bored of it, basically. During the interim, I had no sense of isolation or deprivation whatsoever. The absence of the signal in no way inferred to me that I was being ignored or abandoned. Instead, there was a complete sense of security, a full-fledged desire to continue and broaden my participation in physical life around me, a freedom to express my self-maligned curiosity rather than anxiety as to daily and upcoming patterns. I simply went back to the grazing principle, knowing what I found today would lead me to tomorrow, whatever tomorrow was. The signal would come when it was appropriate. So, and it, it did. so basically, over here, he went into the flow, right? He just was doing what was coming up in the moment. He was operating in the now, not being worried about what was going to happen tomorrow. So he jacked into the flow over here and things just started happening for him. And it did. One morning, I began to get a feeling of needing to do something I had forgotten. At first, I wasn't sure but what it was indeed something I had failed to do in my physical activity. However, around 11 that morning, I became exceedingly drowsy, so much so that I went into the bedroom to lie down for a short nap. I wasn't tired, but I did need to sleep. Within seconds after stretching out on the bed, I dropped into deep relaxation. At that point, I could perceive it clearly. The inspect signal was there, cleanly defined and strong. I succeeded in staying calm enough to develop the OOB pattern, roll out and into the second. Sliding out of the second was automatic and I reached and stretched, homing on the familiar ident. The change was instantaneous, no sense of movement whatsoever. The bright glowing figure was in front of me. I was aware of the radiation, but it was quite comfortable. Very proficient, Ashinin, and progress too. There have been many changes. We believe you are ready for the next, how do you call it, step. It was not a percept, but I wondered idly if that was a polite way to inform me I would no longer return to the physical. Well, I could go add some music to Charlie's sunset. Or, that is not the step we have planned. You will know when your physical body release is to take place. We will not need to inform you. Nor do we plan or participate in such release unless you request it. You have much to complete prior to such a change. I received that information with mixed emotions. One great part of me yearning to get on with it. The other reaching back to physical earth and the deep, poignant emotions I was sharing there. I remembered many years ago, during a strong pressure point, when the option to stay or complete release from the physical was available to me. And I agreed to take the physical as long as it was operational, whatever the situation, because I wanted to find out what happened tomorrow. Curiosity. So, now, many people who have NDE experiences say the same thing, that they, want, they did not want to come back, right? But they were told that they have a lot to do 
in this physical life reality and that is why they need to come back so he says over here during a strong pressure point when the option to stay or re completely release from the physical was available to me i agreed so that means there was someone else with wh whom he was agreeing agreed to take this physical life form as long as it was operational so as long as the body was working he agreed to be in the body right so he made an agreement so he took a decision to be in that physical body we have explained to you that it is one of your assets completion of this next step will provide you with many answers there was very much a missing element in the pattern and nothing in the world would prevent my curiosity from seeking the answer nor out of this world you need no longer stay closed for the shift i managed to stay calm but expectant so this is again important okay not out of this world and you no longer need to stay closed for the shift so staying closed means protecting yourself when the shift occurs so now he is matured enough to take the shift at a conscious level we were on the far rim of the outermost ring i could recognize it from the very thin ambience of haze the so soft white forms were all around us i could perceive my inspect friend was with me but there was no glowing form there is no need to distract their attention i reached for any percept of bill then of lu i couldn't find either they have graduated as you put it that was to be expected and i had a percept of their new address as it were but there was some factors involved that disturbed me and i couldn't bring it out then i became aware of the intent in word focus of the entire outermost ring the inhabitants thereof there was a strong radiation of expectancy not concern as if the star of the show was about to make an entrance i followed the line of their focus it was the physical planet earth indistinct and nebulous from this perspective let us take another view point by all means and the phrase does fit click so they are they are watching they are actually watching the earth from a very high view point right now that event is going to take place and robert monro in his form in that state of consciousness is very a, a very very important participant in that particular event we were out in space somewhere between the earth and the moon in determinate distance 50000 miles plus from the surface of earth it was very clear and detailed not as it was before i turned to look at the moon and blanked no more than a thousand feet away or so it seemed was an immense solid appearing object gray in color long and slender conical shaped with a hemispheric dome at the widest end the other end was somewhere in the distance at several at least several miles it appeared motionless but i had the definite percept of m band radiation from it a spaceship a physical spaceship in your terms that is correct it is not a human construct there are many of such around the physical earth at this point their origins are of your physical universe but not necessarily of your time reference many could be 5 or 5000 there was no point in trying to find out but why around our earth was it they are focused on the planet earth and humans just as you observe the others and for the same purpose shall we move on the answer will come soon my curiosity accepted gladly click so he so basically what he is saying over here that those spaceships have come from the future to observe a particular event or they are there observing what is happening my immediate percept of the earth was a pinpoint of reflected light in the distance 
no larger than a small star. From it came irregular waves of energy, multidimensional pulsing intermittently broken by occasional quick flares. A complex unorganized pattern composed not of light or electromagnetic or gravitic structure, but of some other energy that I couldn't define. I was so completely fascinated by the display that I did not at first notice the background. As far as I could perceive in all directions, with the earth at the center was a host of forms, countless numbers it seemed. Some had shape, others appeared as no more than a wisp of cloud vapor. All glowed in various degrees of intensity. From those nearest us, I had the same percept of expectancy or waiting for the show to begin. It must be some big show to attract all of these. So the oh, gathering. Okay. So this is the gathering. People are gathered from all over intergalactic space to observe this particular event which is going to take place. It is what we call the gathering. These have manifested from other nearby energy systems only to witness the big show, as you call it just as those within the physical spacecraft and your final process humans. This big show, which is about to occur, is actually a very rare event. The conflux of several different and intense energy fields arriving at the same point in your time space. It is this rarity that had, has attracted so much attention. In terms that you can perceive, it may occur once every 80, 87 million of your Earth years. Very long odds and a long time to wait. This doesn't not warrant that it will be produced at that frequency. There are random elements and variables in the format which cannot be predicted. So, so the... So the energies have to form in a particular way for an event to take place. This is also, you know, when the kum melas take place, they say there's a confluence of energies which takes place at that time, which is the result why they have the kum mela at that time. Even the religious festivals which are there, certain planetary positions are there, which make a certain energy flux available, which creates a field <coughs> which is why those religious functions are held on those particular days. But this is, of course, a rarity. So random that the event might not take place, perhaps there would be a lot of disappointed it is long past such point. It will occur. The interest lies in the result. It is best symbolized to you as a convergence of a great number of possibilities which emerge as several probabilities and few possibilities. One of such probabilities may alter not only your time space, but all adjoining energy systems as well. Therefore, the wide interest in human terms still symbolized the gathering is here to observe the possible birth of a new energy. Will it survive the birth process? And if so, what are the potentials inherent in such energy that will predict accurately the same at maturity? Or will the energy arrive stillborn and all the possibilities remain no more than that? Weak, uncoordinated possibilities. Running a bit of my exquisite H plus road made it quite clear, but my still inhuman self looked at Earth and the human system. There is a human oriental symbol for crisis, which is composed of two sub symbols indicating danger and opportunity. The event in human and physical Earth terms is definitely a point of crisis. It is quite valid that as to human existence, both danger and opportunity will be present in extreme degrees. So what is he saying over here? Everything is a probability which will lead to a certain possibility. Now in this event, because it is meant to happen, 
the possibilities of it not happening are very limited but the probabilities of what will happen are many now again this is a little confusing over here but over here he says very clearly in the next sentence that in any crisis there is a lot of danger as well as opportunity so we have seen this that the maximum growth the maximum innovation takes place in time of extreme danger now whenever there is a war there is extreme danger and the extreme or the maximum number of inventions take place as a result of war because there is extreme danger and it results in extreme opportunities and possibilities also maturing at that time danger physical danger mental the those are the possibilities the exact nature of which will be determined by the event itself whatever your percept may be is one of the possibilities one or several will occur the other side the opportunity that is the key to the understanding of the event it will offer human consciousness a rare potential to emerge rapidly into a unified intelligent energy system that will range far beyond your time space illusion creating constructing teaching as only a human trained graduate energy is able to do our visit to earth in 3000 plus a possibility that may become probable with the event your action is one of the minute random factors that may make it so so very clearly he says that what he experienced in 3000 plus in that uh, visit that he had made so it says here a possibility that may become a probable it may become probable with the event so that whatever event is going to take place because see again when a butterfly flutters its wings in brazil it affects the entire universe that that saying so this one event has the possibility of affecting the entire universe that is what he is talking about here a possibility that may become probable with the event your action is one of the minute random factors that may make it so if the opportunity is missed humans will retreat as the dominant species on earth until they no longer survive as active consciousness eventually in any form i asked it directly and you all of you what will you do if that takes place there was a beautiful warmth and a small soft smile in the response we would just have to start up some action on some other planet in time space with new humans i turned inward and closed there was not much i could think or do i was hit hard emotionally and i didn't want to lose it not now there is one more process we have to perform then you can return to your physical i wasn't sure i could handle one more but i knew that i would i dent your friend bb and guide him here the road spread instantly i had left him with bill and bill wasn't there you will locate him easily there is a very special function he can perform for us no questions were needed and i reached iden bb and stretched click i was getting better or older no sense of motion whatsoever and i had very little surprise at the location i was a on the grass in front of charlie's cabin bb and charlie were over to one side busily engaged in something i went over to them just as bb perceived me hey ram he vibrated loudly look what we're making charlie was laughing i keep telling the kid you can't have a sailboat and a hang glider all in one air and water aren't the same i flickered you can see him now charlie visually charlie smiled oh sure worked that out the first day he got here he must have changed the ocean a 100 times 
before I got him stopped. Had it yellow with square waves. How about that? But he's smart, catches on fast. I swooned. Well, I hate to break it up, but I need BB here to do something for me. BB opened. You name it, Ram. Charlie waved. Come on back, kid. BB rolled. Who's to keep me away? Charlie shook his head and laughed, and I reached, stretched for the ident in spec. Click. So now, now BB, BB is becoming. becoming now BB is becoming comfortable over here. Okay, this is what is saying, and naturally BB is being able to do stuff. BP was beside me. Hey, you sure tightened your skip. I would never have hung on except I was used to it from a game we played back in. He cut short and closed tightly as he became aware of the brightly glowing form of the inspect. I should have warned him, I guess. Below us was the physical earth about 500 feet. It was night and occasional lights dotted the countryside. Almost directly under us was an area of water like a small pond or pool, and immediately beyond, a green pyramid-like structure with a light glowing inside. It had a strong point of familiarity, but I couldn't bring it back. I turned to BB. Just open slow. It's a friend. He did so carefully, then focused on the bright glow. A uh, hello. We appreciate your coming. BB had no cultural restraints. We had a girl back in KT95 who claimed he met you or one just like you. We put it off as some more wild route. It is understandable, BB went on. He kept throwing it at us and after a while he pulled a skip and never came back. So he was right, you're real. You are needed to perform a specific act, if you will. BB flickered. Uh, sure, sure. Let us move closer. The three of us moved down slowly just over the top of the green pyramid and beyond and stopped outside a small structure in the middle of a grove of trees. It was very familiar to me and for some reason, I was becoming uncomfortable. It was as if I were encountering a resistance. Something pushing me back the more I try to move forward. Your friend AA is there. It is important that you help him at this point. BB blanked. AA? That is correct. BB focused and so did I. Inside the small structure, a man was lying on a bed or pot. The resistance I felt some seemed to be emanating from him. It was exactly the same as the other time. It was AA. I was sure the resistance was strong and it made me vibrate. BB turned. I guess it's him all right. I get a part of his ident, not much. I'm getting some other with it that I know too, but the percept is wild. It is important that you help him separate from his physical temporarily. BB lighted. You mean like Ram here? That is correct. He blanked. How can I do it? First, pull gently. Use the energy you apply when you skip. Bibi turned and moved in close to the man on the bed. I watched with fascination, wondering if this was the way it had started with me. If some non-physical friend had been enlisted to help me move out of body during the early stages but I didn't have any non-physical friends back then that I knew of. Suddenly, the resistance grew much stronger and pushed me back. I held my position as best as I could, feeling very uncomfortable. I turned inward and closed. The man was standing in the middle of the floor and his physical body was on the cot. Bibi backed away, flickering heavily. He focused at the inspect. He's out. I got him out. But uh, inquire as to his purpose? 
The man responded, but all I was able to perceive was M band scratching and screeching that indicated strong emotion. It was his first time I could understand and empathize with him. He stated he wished to serve humankind. Very noble goal. I managed to open somewhat. Why this resistance? It's there if I try to get close to his friend AA. A true paradox refuses to exist. You will understand soon. BB came in strong. He wants to go with us. Can he do that? The resistance and screeching was so, so strong they hurt. Yet I knew I had the answer before the inspect gave it. Inform him he must stay and perform his design function. He has no other choice at this point. In spite of the hurt, I tried to observe. After a moment, BB moved up and joined us. The man sank to his knees in the middle of the floor and the screeching became so strong I had to close completely. Let us move to a point where it is more comfortable for you. I agreed eagerly. Click. So, now what has happened? BB has helped AA get out of his body. Right? And naturally, wherever A is, Ram has a problem in going near there. There's a resistance which is created. Now, because this is the first time that A, -A, 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 -A has actually got out of his body, he's still a lot of emotions are there. So a lot of M band screeching is there. He's not used to it, right? So naturally, there are a lot of emotions welling up in, in, in uh, A. -A. We were just outside the thin haze of the intermediate area. In the distance were the rings with the indistinct form of the physical earth at the center. The M-band noises, especially the screeching, had faded completely. I opened in relief. The inspect was in front of me, BB off to one side, completely closed, which was strange. It is done, the pattern is complete. There was a point of finality in the statement that made me uneasy. It echoed back through me, triggering familiar emotional wrote as it went, and I dealt with the and diverted each one as it arose. This time it was different. I had far too much exquisite and precious wrote to let it be otherwise. The uneasiness vanished. I open wide and smooth. I understand about individuation. It is not necessary. You have learned your lessons well, Ashanin. The brightly glowing form winked out. For now, I knew there would be no longer be an inspect ident to follow, but I felt no sense of loneliness. I moved over to BB as he hovered motionless, still closed. I focused. Hey, old buddy, I got to go back. He opened slowly. Yeah, uh, Ram, I got to do something myself anyway. I had no doubt what it was. Well, you'll do fine, just like pulling skips and playing games back on KT95. He lighted. Yeah, sure, a bunch of games. I opened wide. You can do it, Tiger. Keep my ident and have fun. I turned and stretched to reach, but he stopped me. What's the push, baby? He flickered. Uh, the, that last thing we did, me pulling AA out. Uh, you don't have any percept on it, do you? No, except it was certainly AA. That same resistance stuff was there. Why? Something I didn't get. Baby focused on me hard and I waited. Suddenly he lighted very brightly and started to roll strongly. It almost became human laughter. It was that strong. I flickered. What's so funny? You have fun, uh, Ram. I watched as he moved in the direction of the first entry station, still rolling. When he disappeared inside, I turned and reached ident physical body and stretched gently. I moved slowly inward through the rings, feeling strong and sure knowing I still had much human road to pick up and go through. I entered the second and then into the physical being, 
knowing one pattern had ended and another would begin. But what was so funny? The green pyramid, roof, three on a beam, hey. On a clear night before going to bed, I might go out and stand on the sun deck and look up. When I do, sometimes the stars disappear and there is nothing but blackness overhead. From beyond the black comes an unseen and eternal song that is hauntingly familiar, a reminder if needed, cutting sharply through the noise of local traffic. Inspect BB, Lou, Bill, her, all there in the song, but not AA. Then it fades, the star returns to blankness. Blackness, I take a deep breath and go back inside. So why is AA not there? Because A is actually RAM only, right? So now you had RAM in three places existing in the time field continuum at different spots because he was behind the barrier when they went in, in the year 3000. Then he was here where, where BB actually helps him come out of the body. So the event that they had all come to witness was BB taking uh, Robert Monroe out of his physical body. And that naturally started a new conscious awareness starting up with him actually uh, uh, coining the term out of body experience ultimately. Okay, anyone, anything? I think we can stop here today.